Use your hands to underscore the importance of an issue. This isn't to say when you're having a conversation, you should use your hands a lot, not related. This is only about presentations. One way to emphasize an issue is to show with your hands. So for example, something small, a small issue, a small problem, it gives the word an emphasis. Something very big, moving your hands to show something very big, a big problem, a big opportunity, gives it more value, more meaning. Emphasizing emotions, by, you can do it by placing your hand on your heart. I think that one's a little too showy. <sighs> this is something that you practice using a video. You practice doing it because there's a certain quality of acting that gives your speech, your meeting, presentation, more feeling. If you are able to use your hands to emphasize things that you want to emphasize, you don't have to use your hands when you're actually giving your speech. It's whatever feels comfortable to you. But having the tool is better than not having the tool. That's my point. Help others keep track of your explanation of two different groups by representing one group with each hand. When you're talking about those two groups, the doctors and the artists, it's easier for people to see the visual if it's represented with your hands. Show two things being brought together by bringing your hands together. And this one is like the heart one. It's kind of cheesy, but it's not bad. We, it's, it brings up an emotional response in people and it's true, it's effective. So consider practicing it here with me and not doing it if you don't feel comfortable doing it. Well, the other thing that I wanted to talk to you about hands is what should you do with your hands when you're not using them? This article talks about hand use in TED Talks. The most popular TED Talks hand gestures are very high and the less popular TED Talks, the hand gestures are very low. That's to say, scientifically, people do respond to hand gestures. I think it's like tones in your voice. If you're using monotone, people get tired of it and bored easily. If you change the tone of your voice a lot and sound very interested and very excited about what you're saying, same thing with hands. They're acting. You and me. We're doing. That being said, I want it to feel natural to you. Open palm. This is open. I'm open to suggestions. I'm open to you. You can trust me. Yeah. As opposed to being closed and closed off. I'm not really listening. Open. There's a strike zone, they call us this area. This is where you want to keep your hand gestures. In this area, keeping your hand gestures is good. Out here, not that good. Even when we're talking about big, a big problem, as opposed to a big problem. This one is so big that it feels unnatural, too showy, and not not as authentic. Speaking of, so, I do this a lot. To me, it's like the swan, like bling. <laughs> I don't know why, but pointing. This is not appropriate. You don't wanna do this. This is calling attention to certain parts of your body that you don't want to call attention to. Don't put your hands here yeah, this area for women and for men. If you put your hands there, people's eyes will go to your hands. Another thing they say is don't hold things. It's distracting. You know the word crutch. When you break your legs, you have this thing under your arm. It's called a crutch. It helps support you. Having something in your hands is like a crutch. It's to keep you busy. It's to keep your hands from doing something. On the other hand, if you are really, 
really nervous and you're a nail biter or a smoker. Moving your hands around a lot, it's better than this. This is the worst. The worst for no reason is much worse than holding something. If it's helpful to hold something, then do that. In general, the rule is don't hold things. Use your hands as a tool to help explain what you're trying to say. Don't move them around too fast. That's distracting and annoying. Use the tool, right, for you, to help you get your message across. If you're standing behind a podium, make your hands visible. Don't put your hands behind your back. Avoid spider hands. Spider hands, unless you're using this as a, maybe a little joke or something. I'm thinking about something devilish. I don't know. This is the steeple. The worst is not controlling your hands. Yeah, this is better than that. All right. This is not the best. The best is using your hands, but this is better than this. We've talked about hand gestures as communication. We've talked about hand gestures as in where to put your hands when you're publicly speaking. And we've talked about not fidgeting, not doing certain things like pointing. Point. All right. Uh, again, please leave me a, the comment I, I asked for about men and women and gender choices. It can be very short. Just a few, just make a few points. Uh, the fashion one, I said five or six points. This one, just one or two points is fine. Just a short one to show me that you're committed to doing it. All right, so that is the end for my hand gestures lesson. Hands. So until next time, try, make mistakes, and keep going.